Hello, and we are back. We're back to play some Disco Elysium again. I, um, took the day off yesterday. Well, I took the day off of streaming yesterday. Uh, if you happen to check out my, uh, tw my Twitter, or see the uh, Twitter feed that's linked on my, my, um, my channel page here, my day job decided to become a night job yesterday, and I didn't get off work until, well, almost two hours after we're broadcasting right now. So, that was a whole bust. But we're going to make up for it today by starting day three. We did kind of get a... I got my days mixed up, just full disclosure, and I accidentally streamed Disco Elysium on Monday when I meant to play a multiplayer game. But we did a really nice long stream, and we got through all of day two. So it is now day three in the game, and we are going to continue investigating our murder. <laughs> but yeah, we're we're going to be uh, traveling into uncharted waters here. I've already got the game loaded up. Let's get into it. Let's see how the game audio is. Yep, game audio sounds fine. You. Have you ever woken up in a busted hotel room wearing a kimono and a cowboy hat? <laughs> this guy has. Let's change into something more appropriate. Let's see. What does that give me? Encyclopedia? I want to keep that. Oh. Logic. What does this give me? Visual calculus? We're going to go with logic. Um, electrochemistry, no bad reaction speed. I'd rather have the electrochemistry, I think. Oh wait, they both give it weird. I gotta get me a better pair of pants. Um, drama, electrochemistry, conceptualization. That's just a logic. I think I'm gonna go with the arsenal jacket. Yeah. And I don't need those gloves. Go with the half light. All right. I think we're ready to go. Stay. It's now Wednesday. Speak to the assault victim. Okay, confront her. Okay. Oh, one other thing that we managed to do yesterday is we are... A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face. Now without the expression. We remove the expression. It's get to it uh. I wonder if she's up here Yesterday, I was talking to her, and uh, I saved my game, and when it, when it came back, when it loaded back in, it, she was gone. <laughs> so I don't, hmm, hoping it didn't glitch out. Okay, she's here now. Hello, officer. What cool. brings you up here again? Let's see, volition. She looks back. Time moves mm. slowly. The triangles of her face rearranging into a weary smile. Don't worry. We will protect you from her beauty. We will consult you through the reefs and sounds of her persona. 
we will see through deceits. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. are advised. There are muscles on long white bones that lie. The strange moment ends. Hmm. So I'm gonna need a volition to. The same small, heavy door. No. Okay. Well, let's go find Kim. Let's head across the. Let's head across the water lock and see if we can. Uh, find my gun and my badge. Exciting news for the channel. Um, I recently became aware that PlayStation Now is now on PC. And I got a subscription to that. So we might be playing some PlayStation games on here, including God of War. Um, also, Bloodborne is on there. Are those RCM people? Yes. RCM patrol officer's uniform winces as she notices you. I would really prefer not to talk to you right now. A patrol officer is the lowest rank in the RCM, below lieutenant and sergeant. Yes, I am. I don't know. I mean, uh, why would I want to talk to you? No, you haven't wronged me. It's okay. Okay, fine. Let's talk. What did you want? Hmm. What does one talk about with a fellow officer? What precinct? Am I from? God. He doesn't know. Fucking deranged lunatic. You're getting an intellectually unsatisfying vibe from this conversation. Maybe you're doing something wrong. You look like shit. And I don't mean that as a metaphor. Oh, don't be so modest. We're looking at several months' worth of damage here. Kind of a miracle you're still up and at it, to be honest. Oh, come on, Jean. It looks like it's been a rough week on him. It's not just this week. What do you want? Jean, wait. He had a okay. partner. So this guy is cool. He stands there like a statue. An angry statue. And he does not like you. Watch out for yourself, loser. Hmm. Perhaps I should return to this guy when I... Hi, Gendarme. Another rendezvous. Hmm. Interesting. I wasn't expecting that guy to show up. Nothing's changed back here. Still a tree. Okay. So, first things first. Let's go sell. Sell. Well, let's go sell 
um, the stuff I got. After all, I will need I will need money for hotel room. Tear machine stands in the court. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man. Um, is this about the questions again? Cause a warehouse? I don't know. Maybe. I don't really care what for it does. She looks up from under her brow. Fine. Frit doesn't have a warehouse. Just a little back room here. Okay? Hmm. Ninety cents. I was hoping for more than that. the record Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify the victim as a whore nor did he say anything about trusting her oh shut up and stay out of this Liz he raped her he was out of his fucking mind you have no idea she's just in denial asshole you don't understand the traumatic experience she's shutting down and she doesn't fucking trust you. Yeah, she's crazy, you know. A crazy bitch. You know the type. This is a diversion. Stay on track. Lawman, I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. And you went and pushed her. I am gonna fucking Hit you. Duh. Titus Hardy. Everett personally sent me to take care of this. If this oh, goes she's south, the lawyer, I bet. We'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? When she's angry, she emphasizes the S. It gives her voice a strangely hypnotic quality. Her lips barely move as she speaks. Frankly, it's a bit terrifying. Someone has to rush in to break the tension. The second in command. Look, Copper. We know that that fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. Show it to him, T. What's the harm, right? Here, Jerkwad. Listen to this shit. And then come back and tell me the soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. This is their last play this tape. Their story is in tatters. A mess. It might be nice to listen to, but at this point, you don't need to. You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. We have machines. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. Understood. You've listened in on their communications. 
How long? Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. It's not advanced. You just hold up in a coop all day, writing down what they say. It gets hot as hell in there. Don't put yourself down, Angus. It's important work. Yeah, man. You're like a radio genius or something. Those I'm sure we can find a tip player. Where can I listen to this? Why don't you try shoving it up your ass, genius? Yeah, play it with your- I'm sure we can find a tip player. It's not a problem. Your room had one. Or maybe it's too broken. What's on it? We call it the door gun a mega mix. You'll know why. Won't you listen to it? You don't care about evidence. The fuck are you a cop for then? Big T. They don't care about getting the truth. They care about getting convictions. They are fucking keeping a score on their bulletin boards. I won't be on your bulletin board. If you don't listen to the tape, we got nothing to talk about. There's a lot of questions. If you ask them now, they'll just keep bringing up the tape. Listen to it, and they'll have nothing to hide behind. Don't forget your tape, lawman. Compliments of Titus Hardy. I mean, yeah, sure. You do that. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's. Do I have. I really should probably write this down. I don't think I have anything that helps perception. Hmm, okay. Behind the dock workers, a seat. There's oh, a yellow okay. ribbon tied to one of the branches. Light yellow, faded with time. A tiny speck of color in the blackness of the thicket, hanging from it, a bronze key. Someone hid the key in the bush and attached a yellow ribbon to make it easier to find. It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it. Surely not a coincidence. Huh? I don't know about that. I'm comfortable here. Don't think any sliding would really help right now. Sorry, fucko. Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. Good fucking luck with that. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. With a loud thud, the old man stands up, pushes the window open, grabs the key from the hawthorn branch, and slides it across the table to you. The key is brass. Workshop spear is etched to its bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. Come on, man. We were just having some fun. Where's the home in? I'm tired of listening to your shit. Don't thank me. I don't give two shits about your key. Didn't even know it was there. Boys, no idea. Never even seen it. Someone must have hidden it there before this room became our place. It could open the door in the kitchen, the blue door. It says workshop spare. Maybe there's a workshop there? It's worth a try. Interesting. Okay. I'm 
I'm gonna give something a go real quick. Where'd my clipboard go. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board with the permeables draw. The acidic stench of rotting food is rubbed off on the skin. You know, like the bits they put into public piss bowls, probably called Fermi Discreet or Axel or something. Remember when I said the smell of the upstairs bathroom was so rank they should have sent a poet to describe it? <laughs> Why, yes it is. Among many other things, this cleaning tablet is used by the whirling rags. Perhaps that's where the ledger was dropped in the toilet. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy. Something rattles in and something small inside. Light, made of paper or cardboard, or dried flowers perhaps. Permeables, it's not hidden per se. The, the plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. With your hands, U4 sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. Okay, we have a thing for this. Not that. Interfacing. Alright. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. Mm. The two sides of the board appear slightly misaligned. The slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know, Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Two octopuses are smiling, reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to the zoo in Revachol East. The aquarium costs extra. These let you go there too. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, patches of glue. It smells of chewing gum, apricot flavored, exactly like the gum wrapper you found. The same brand of chewing gum. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card, looped round letters in a woman's hand. A young woman in her twenties, there is care effort and a smile you think although that is not something you can read from someone's handwriting harry it begins you're already reading i wanted to write you a letter so you can read it when you wake up maybe it will make you happy throw it away please outside you hear the wind howl a sudden gale blows in from martinez Flapping street signs and window blinds. Come outside. Let's go outside first. This it's killed me once, so let's save. It's the ledger you found in the trap. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece. Familiar hand. A young woman in her twenties. Harry, throw it away, please. No. A merciful wind blows in from the Bay of Revachol, dusting the ground at your feet and raising newspapers far away. You feel the card slipping into it. Now that you're out, let go. No, don't throw away the baggie. There's dust on the drug baggie. It's not good, but at least it's some kind of way to be together. Just like that, the wind picks it from your fingers. Cold, they let go. The wax paper rustles 
a whisper light and low. Then a sudden gust raises the postcard to the drizzle grey sky above, away from you. A small piece of paper dances above Martinez, above slow waves crashing the shore and the war-torn houses and the new Batimont Nouveau alike. Above you, looking up to the grey sky, greasy and wet. And above the distant streets, the 881, even above the old fish market and the church, its material existence is lost. This great city will pocket it for you. For your own sake, forget about it. Synapses can be rerouted. The mind takes a new shape. Not for yourself, for the people of Revachon. Under Precinct 41, where typewriters fire long into the night, and officers walk the great steps and the bridge. Long after the card has landed in the cold shore waters, its writing dissolved, material disintegrated. The wind carries the keepsake away from you. To the southwest, the pale violet dot disappears. No, you should not have thought back at it. Now some of it is on your mind again. The ledger of oblivion-induced mental health is just as shabby as the damaged ledger was. A bunch of sodden papers sags from the clipboard in your hand. Hmm. That was really interesting. Oh, so I lost the clipboard completely. Six crumbling petals rest on your palm. This is the insulindian lily, called Maybells or Lucille's Tears during the revolution. Girls used to pin these on soldiers before sending them off to battle. This flower is a spring flower, but it's a bit early for that, isn't it? Yes, but not this early, not to my knowledge. It looks dried, preserved. The revolutionaries, so the commoners and the anarchists. White's their color, but the custom started in the suzerain's army, so it held meaning for the kingsmen too. It's about girls and boys more than sides. Girls sending off boys who are going to their deaths, then also dying themselves in the ruins from dysentery and consumption. It's a symbol of the civil war. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. The petals feel dry. Hmm. Caustic echo. Good on you to have thrown that slip into to the wind and walked away, saying, Not today, Dark One. I don't need your keepsakes. I'm not curious. Let the past disintegrate. Let its ink wash off the bay of Martinez. You're through with it. There's no terrifying splash of stomach acid to fill, your, fill you with dread. No caustic lack of air. You haven't lost anything incredibly precious. Too precious to name. You got shit on a stick. All you need to do is keep the shit balanced on the stick, and everything will be fine. Hmm. Bullet. Okay. Interesting. Volition. Oh, one other thing I wanted to check. I had gum or something. Yeah. There it is again. The scent of apricots with a touch of cinnamon. Smells like the end of some distant summer. The surface of another planet or some ancient temple. Bitter, citrus, sweet. It seems to grow stronger like a glow with every breath you take. Whatever petrochemical byproducts they used to create this artificial flavor have bonded tightly to the wrapper. Or is that just your memory? filling the gaps until a blossom of skin and flower petals erupts behind your closed eyes made of toffee cream and distance you just had to take a dive your heart working overtime 
trying to keep up with the panicked synapses firing all over your brain, moving liters of blood through you, panicking. Feels very, very familiar. Harry, please, you were supposed to discard it. The sun sets into the sea, but the water does not boil. Instead, it turns to liquid gold. For a moment, the world's store of precious metals seems to increase dramatically, and you are rich. There is a movement next to you, the shuffle of a small coat, warm like the evening. But when you turn toward it, there's nothing there. Why are you talking to a gum wrapper? Hmm. You found a trace of entity who've been stalking you across the plains. The Gloom Stalker. The conglomeration. The shadowy organization behind your downfall. Possibly connected to the dreaded X something. Granted, it is impossible to determine its true identity. But you can remember where you first smelled its treachery. Yes, use the Tutti Frutti gum wrapper. Reconstruct the day you first breathed in her untrustworthy atoms. Interesting. Was there anything else I could do with it? There it is again. Yes. From the height of antiquity. Okay. Let's try this door. You see a heavy steel. The key fits the dimple lock. It takes a bit of effort to turn it after all these years, but then the lock clicks. Dust rises before you like mist. A tomb? Haunted by regal spirits from distant ages. No. Smells like engine grease and cut wood. A workshop. Hmm. All these mesmerizing machines, just waiting to be plugged back in and played. Feels like it might jump back to life any moment, the lights illuminating the white-robed woman. Some kind of inane pinball theme, probably related to Messina during the DeLorean Age. The history themes are the worst. Deora was one of the three crown cities of the DeLorean era on the Muindi Isola, the others being Rhea Silvia and at Vesperasket. This theme is all about early airships and beautiful, sad, pearl-laden women. It's quite nice, actually. The lieutenant grimaces, looking at the machines. No, I love it. I love pinball. Who doesn't love pinball? Let's move on. He doesn't. No. <laughs> In B, the spare key is tied to the bush outside the roof. Interesting. Hey, you got some money. This small elevator is dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The latticed cage is open, inviting you to step inside. Smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right, and just enough room for two people to fit in. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last Maintenance, 10th July, 88. That it does. I say, let's brave it. At the end of the last century, Look on the bright side. If it fails, we will only sustain minor injuries. I'm talking three, maybe four months in the hospital. Maximum five. It appears this whole enthusiasm is sarcastic. Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. There are large rectangular buttons. Monter, the Sonde, and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. 
Halter is a Koningsteiner lift company who went out of business a long, long time ago. <laughs> Finger pistol, 9mm. Snap, snap, baby. Turns out guns aren't that much for protecting as they are for attacking people. If you want to protect people, really work for them. You have to whip out your signature dual 9mm Villier finger pistols. Who needs real guns anyway? That conversation you just had? It would have gone better had you snapped those bad boys at them. Note, 9mm dual finger pistols do not count for an actual weapon in a gunfight. Interesting. Let's save the game and jump in this elevator. The elevator stands open, inviting you to step inside. Oh, it's just okay. It's trying to fake me out. something quite useful in ball maker's code so this is where they brought 40 pinball machines to fix them up a long time ago everything is covered with dust now the lieutenant looks around the dusty crowded room Inspecting the tools on the shelf. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. Looks like it. I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before it became a hostel. There are machines left over. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall, next to the main door. One of them even oh, yeah, works. That's right. I've seen one of the hearties bang away at it. Remember the dice maker? Then that means... Ah yes, as the novelty dice maker said, this has absolutely nothing to do with the case, I'm sure. But I do like a nice little connection. But then it went bankrupt. Your skin crawls from making the connection. If that's true, then our cafeteria manager is not going to like it. We should tell him what we found up here, omitting that suspicion. He does not appear to be the kind of man who likes his establishment to be part of a neighborhood ghost story about bankruptcy. Stupid superstition. But still, it would be interesting to see what the cafeteria manager thinks of this. It's not a ghost story. It's a curse, and God ought to be made knowledgeable so he can perform counterspells. <laughs> You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Jackpot. These, unlike everything else here, are new. Three weeks maximum from the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week too. You know, officer. This is good. He likes it. There's a little smile there in the dark of the workshop. This isn't bad at all. It was a good idea to see where that door leads. Commendable work bringing us to this place. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. The soles have left a pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. No. These little horizontal lines are different. They look custom made to me. Or some kind of foreign print. Hard to say. Still a boot, though. The size looks about the same, actually. They are not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. 
It means someone snuck through what seemed like a secret route behind Classius's room in the recent weeks. This may prove to be significant. Interesting. You can oh, almost I just realized see where I'm at. The shape of a man and a woman writhing inside, <laughs> bathed in drug sweat and dirty linens. Bottles lie around everywhere. You can barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist conclusions here. The footprints on the floor, however, definitely suspicious. Boring footprints. I want to jump to sensationalist conclusions. You lean closer to the peephole instinctively. I bet they're doing something quite unnatural there. Sensationally unnatural. Hmm. I do want to question her at some point. But I think I'm going to unlock one of these first. This is the barred door you tried to kick in before. Officer, what brings you up here again? Yeah? I did not. Mystery solved then. I kept wondering where it led. There may be more to this mystery at some later time. She's holding back. Let's make a mental note for now. Okay. I'm glad someone's had fun. Huh. This isn't good. She's straight as a stick, suddenly. A peephole? You mean like a hole in the wall? Yes. Looking into your bedroom, miss. Okay. Digital her fear and disgust moves through her body, beginning from her shoulders and ending in her hips. The cigarette tastes foul to her now. Do you think this is somehow connected to me? Okay. Do you have any way of knowing how long it has been there? Unfortunately, no. But if I were to guess, long enough. The perforation is under the bookshelf on your wall. It should not be hard to cover with some tape. Shit. I don't know. Maybe it's been there for a long time. Maybe the local kids use it or something. I don't know. She does. She must have some idea. I'll be fucking covering it up with a lot of tape, that's for sure. Was there anything else back there? Honestly, I have no clue. Yet. Maybe it's something she's keeping for a later move, when she's more sure of herself. Mm-hmm. She's lost in thought. Eyes narrowed, forehead furrowed. All right. Hmm. I don't want to bring that up with her yet. Very interesting. I haven't even gotten to what I was going to do today. <laughs> We've been going for 45 minutes and I haven't even gotten out of the hotel yet. 
Interesting though, very interesting. Okay, let's go see if we can get across the, uh, the lock. Or the, uh, water gate, or whatever they called it. It was this way, right? Rusting control panel. The water lock starts moving. All right, we can go to the coast now. Expect rugged terrain and drums. And if you wanted to forge that document for Evrat, now you can. Interesting. Let's look at that document. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. Oof. A 12 to 40 month construction period. And the zoning plan in the addendum. Yeah, let's not do that. if I can the logic okay now that we're now that we're out you take the legal documents out of wow, the envelope okay. okay so but maybe maybe what it means is don't do it in the open thank you Banged up fuel canister. A banged up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the Insulindian Ocean. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and the engine remain visible. It must be cold and lonely down there, in the icy water. The seawater has already started to corrode the metalworks. Remember the tire tracks in Martinez? This is where they were leading. It appears to be so. I agree. We should definitely investigate. You get a sudden, sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in the deep, dark, cold water. Why the doom and gloom? It's just a sunken motor carriage. Some motor carriages are bound to end up in the sea. 
The logo is too deep in murky water. You can't make it out, but you do. The ice hasn't closed around the vehicle yet. My guess is it's been here since last Saturday or Sunday. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. A single day in the salty seawater would ruin most vehicles, but this one looks worn even in places the salt water hasn't touched it. Let's wait for the low tide and see what's inside. Great idea. Then we can get the things inside. The joyrider must have left something good inside. Guns, I bet that's my car. Papers. Maybe a cool jacket. A joyrider jacket. A joyrider jacket. You feel a strange connection to this joyrider. Maybe he's from some kind of joyrider's district and likes blue and white racing livery? Like a cop would? I don't know. An hour or two tops? Sure. I feel like we're wasting time, but... As you sit down in the old, rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. The hinges creak under your weight. Dangerously so. Nothing but the sound of seagulls high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. The tune on your lips forms a strange yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance, then, still looking straight ahead, he joins you with a higher pitched and slightly more melodic trill. Two birds on a wire, whistling <laughs> by the seaside, I really like looking at the water and the sunken car. The clouds pass in the sky and the shadow of the swing moves like the hour hand on a timepiece. Thirty minutes have passed. Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic for discussion. God. I believe it's following a pattern set millions of years ago by cosmic forces. But I suppose it could move quicker, yeah? Clouds on the horizon grow darker, and the shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. Thirty minutes pass. The world turns as fast as it was. Your voice echoes on the water, strange and out of place in the environment. Thirty more minutes pass. Yes, 41. What do you think it stands for? It's as if he knows what it stands for, but wants you to say it. It's pedagogical. Does he know something about the driver of this vehicle? A precinct, yes. A police precinct. Precinct 41, your precinct. A massive pit opens up in your stomach, <laughs> and the most terrible feeling comes over you. You feel like you're about to faint and fall off the swing. Your hands get clammy, and the air tastes sour to breathe. No, just nope. Say no to this, Harry. <laughs> I'm afraid so, yes. It looks like you started in front of the whirling, jumped over the canal, and then drove your vehicle in the sea right here. Yes, let's go take a look. Regular law official. You've done it, Harry. Whatever else you are, you're also boring now. It was not easy. You spent most of your life trying to funk up every nook and cranny of your personality. When someone says something political, the first three thoughts in your head are a ludicrous hodgepodge of communism, fascism, and stock tips. When they ask you why you did something, 
its superstardom, Apocalypse, or the mea culpus, of the flagellant cop monk. It's not easy reaching for the fourth option, the normal one, but you have. And now, you're not just crazy, you're also boring. <laughs> hey! All my learning caps went up by like a lot though. That's cool. So I got a plus one to... Or a learning cap plus one to everything. That's... I'd say that's kind of worth it. Yeah, I... I'm supposing there's no way around that. The vehicle thing. There's my badge. Oh, he's a commander. This is it. The scene of the party. The fire pit. Cigarettes and empty bottles all evidence it. Not as such. I'm talking about what came after the party scene. Looks like they were here a while. Judging from all the bottles, the sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point, like a goose ice sculpture or a chocolate fountain. Hold on, let's... Let's save before we do anything. Okay, so I got my... Got my badge. A police badge on which you see the photo of a man. You. Some seaweed is stuck to the back. At least something good came out of all this. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and a watermark in the shape of the street grid of Revishol West. You see a photo, a name, a rank. A document number, the date of issue, and, in the lower right corner, your precinct. The man keeps winking at you with his green-gray eyes. The photo is old, no doubt about that, but the badge is new. You used an old photo for a new badge. Eight, maybe ten years. The guy in the picture is rather good-looking. He's got a nice haircut and is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. What do you think? His face is already contorted by the expression, although it looks less grotesque on him than it did on you. It looks like you had quite the charming face way back then. Your hair is brown and slightly curly. Your eyes seem more clear somehow. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Aria. That's long for Harry. So you are Harry. Evrat was half right. Probably not a lot of people know your full name. Whoever told him you're Harry Dubois didn't. At least to make your acquaintance, Harry or Dubois. <laughs> he's not going to call you Harrier. He'll keep calling you officer when he's angry with you, and detective when he's not. That's funny. I did, I the didn't badge that in up. your hands shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information. Lieutenant W. Freighter. The lieutenant is a rank above sergeant and below captain. It's the highest rank in the RCM that still does field work. I am a lieutenant. The title of Freighter is added to your rank when you decline a promotion to a higher rank. In your case, captain. You have declined twice. Thus, your double E freighter. There are many reasons one would do this. The rank above you in your precinct's décomptage might be taken, or sometimes promoted officers do not want to replace their superiors out of respect. And sometimes they just prefer the type of police work available to their current rank, in your case, lieutenant. 
Heavy duty case solving machine. Decontage is the hierarchical system employed by the Revachol Citizens Militia. It means counting down to twos. The countdown is modeled after the dual leadership system employed by the left during the revolution, which in turn was developed by last century experimental psychologists in the University of Königstein. The lowest rank is junior officer, usually teenagers. Then there are the patrol officers, then sergeants, lieutenants, and then a captain. That's basically it, except for a few kings. Kings like satellite officers and the additionally a freighter rank I already explained. The long and short of it is, you're his superior. You are given the title of satellite officer if your partner is quickly promoted through the ranks and you rise with him. You don't seem to be a satellite. No, I've been putting up with you because despite an unconventional approach, you are doing good police work. It matters more than driving your motor carriage into the sea. <laughs> and now we've even found your badge. He trusts you, for now. Try not to spoil it. Such a small yet precious thing. Expensive paper caught between thick plastic, like a fly in amber. It reads... That's just the serial number. Revachol, Jamrock, Precinct 41, with some numbers thrown in there for good measure. You know, just to stop for a second. Something that I find really fascinating about this game is that uh, the character of Kim, I don't think I've ever ran into a non-playable character in a video game whose opinion of me mattered as much as, like, to me as his does it's just interesting like every time every time he, he like commends you for good police work it's like your dad telling you you did a good job or something it's very interesting the numbers are not there for good measure they have an administrative purpose one that's unfortunately been erased from your memory four months ago I'm guessing that's when you were promoted to the rank of Lieutenant W. Freighter. A new badge usually comes with a new rank. You seem to have been doing well then. The pain in your chest tells you you were working yourself to death to earn that rank. The case created a lot of edge you have to take off. The death march really gets us going. You're pretty sure you weren't doing well, but better? Probably yes. Yes, it's the designation of your precinct, 41, like mine says 57. The 57th is mostly industrial harbor, a lot of asphalt. The 41st is, it's a tough station to work in. You have all of Jamrock to cover. That district should have three precincts, but money is what it is. It's no wonder you are like you are, he thinks. But then again. But then again, it's a legendary district and a hell of a station too. It must be an honor and a curse to work with people like Price, McCoy, Berdyayeva. Roberts, Feuerbach, Dimitri. Suddenly, names from your decomptage flash in your forebrain. He knew all those people, although they're not from his station. They must be big. The badge in your hand shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of... Interesting. And I bet you anything now, all my stuff is filled in. Interesting. Okay, well, that is one mystery solved. I drove my car into the sea, but I found my patch. Let's go ahead and put this on, because sometimes there has been... Okay, nothing in the pockets or anything, so we'll go back to the...
worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Kingdom of Conscience. Mm. These are some wonderfully regular pants. Not too tight, not too loose, moderate in every sense. You'll blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. Mm -hmm. I know you do. These inter-Isolari pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call the moral intern on you like this. That's if you're a little more moralist now, buddy. A little more normal, even if you didn't want to be. Makes sense. This is what wearing boring office trousers does to you. I mean, it's fine. Like, I don't. Moralists kind of annoy me, but they're not, like, the worst. Plus one to Kingdom of Conscience. Okay, what does that do? <laughs> bow tie. Big area. There we go, we got the money for the room. Rust peels off the bent iron posts of the swing. The wind whistles through the skeleton of the small house behind you. There's desolation everywhere. In this yard? Someone thought they could have a summer house in a block obscure for cheap. It didn't work out. They abandoned it about a decade ago. A black block, a part of the city left and renovated after the war, or one that has fallen to gang violence, or has become inhospitable in some other way. 
On aerial photos, block obscures look like dark squares, hence their name. Practically, it's not an official term in any way, but look around. No sewage, broken power lines, crime, drums. Life is tough in the blocks. It's no place to build a summer house. Yes, for you to scavenge like a post-apocalyptic scavenger who collects <laughs> trash and errant magnesium blisters. It's not meant as nagging, just an <laughs> observation. We should move. I don't think we will solve the murder with forays into the urban hinterland, at least in this phase of the investigation. I think he kind of likes Harry. <laughs> There's no way to listen to the tape without a working tape player or portal reel at hand. A pawn shop. A pawn shop. Oh. Have a tape player. That's where I need to go anyway for the other one. Let's see if I can. Keep you this take computer. the legal documents out of the envelope. I can't. Okay. We're going to figure it out. One thing I would say, I wish this map was more, like it's, it's pretty, but it's not very, it's not very easy to read. <laughs> So you can't go past that point. Anything back here? I guess I, oh, I guess I could zoom out, huh? something up there. Thank <laughs> you. 
worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. It's military. A service depot of some sort. Probably something that is no longer there. To payphone under a yellow plastic dome. You could use it to call someone, unless you're out of change. Someone has left an unidentifiable article of clothing on this railing. It smells really bad. It's streaked with dried seagull shit and tanned yeah. with pieces of seaweed. A dangling arm suggests that there might be a jacket beneath the crust of filth. It seems likely that it was left in the surf until someone laid it out on this fence to dry out. Unfortunately, that just seems to have stiffened it into a shapeless mass. Please, tell me you're not taking that with you. A clue? You think our suspect is a seagull who's been defecating on unsuspecting jacket? The lieutenant sighs. A poet could write a dozen verses and still not begin to capture the profound <laughs> vexation in that sigh. You should still take it. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. It's a sordid, filthy tale, not for the weak. Are you sure you can stomach it? Some secrets are better left uncovered. Don't even try. Seriously. It occurs to you that you're not even holding the jacket itself, but rather the thick crust of jetsam and seagull shit that ensconces it. It smells like a dead sea creature tangled in grey strands of seaweed. It must have spent quite some time in the water before the tide deposited it ashore. Why? Why did you think about it? Look at your hands. They're covered in muck. Now you're just flicking that shit everywhere. This is a disaster. You'll never get the smell out. As you hold it in your hands, it makes an uncomfortable crunching sound. It's probably... Hold on, I gotta know. Is this here just to, like, hurt me? 
Surely there's a point to this. As you hold it, there is no why. Nice. Awful and familiar. Don't you recognize it? That idiot's pungency, that faintly cloying sweetness. Only death smells like that. Something cold wakes in the pit of your stomach. Thick. The signs of decaying meat. It announces itself from two dozen meters away. A warning, a memento mori. The lieutenant has already brought a handkerchief to his nose. There's some tear, an empty cigarette package, and a crumpled kebab wrapper in the trash bin. Two empty bottles of Tallulah vodka and a can of black potent porter is all you find. No, there's more in there. Livis strawberry liquor, plus some Pilsner bottles too. Better not pick them up. They seem unhygienic. A tragedy. He shakes his head with genuine sadness. Whoever tossed it here was a heavy smoker. The brand name reads Red Astra. Red Astra is the black market version of Astra cigarettes, known for their high tar content. You see traces of mayonnaise and ketchup on it as well as a tomato wedge. The wrapper reads, Shish Kebab Revachol. It's hard to concentrate in the smell. The sea air brings some relief. A man lies on the boardwalk, his limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. The smell is... Not as bad as a two-week-old corpse, but it's definitely heading there. Hold on. Lividity is faintly pronounced. Whoever this is, has been dead for two days. No longer. We need to investigate. Another dead body. This is your job. Steal yourself. Calm now. Carefully. Just another day. Just another dead body. Breathe. He's wearing. Mud caked boots, beige trousers, and an old brown leather jacket with a bright blue lining. There are traces of kebab sauce on his chest. The leather jacket suits him well. It must be custom made. You find some sunflower seeds and a rain soaked library card folded into two. His jacket feels sodden and heavy under your hand. Good. We should take a look at that library card after this is done. The man has fallen through a crack in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Coagulated blood covers his black hair. One of his feet is still dangling through the hole. You have to be quite inebriated to fall that bad. Well over a liter of pure ethanol. Three bottles of wine or one and a half of spirits. Or maybe it was just dark. His expression is dull like the sea behind him. Drops of water shining on his mustache. His eyes empty and wide, look frightening in their frozen gaze. Height, 170 to 175 centimeters. Curly hair, stout build, age approximately 50 to 60 years. There's some dried blood on the metal bench, right where the corpse's head rests. The floorboards are rotten and slippery wet around the hole. An empty bottle lies nearby. A chewing gum wrapper is clutched in his fist. A dried chunk of blood covers the hair at the back of his head. An open wound. It's sticky and cold to your touch. This is what killed him. I don't see any other major wounds, do you? Seems like the head wound was fatal. It's exactly the shape of the bench. They screech under your feet ominously 
It's hard to say whether the dead man's weight was the cause of the boardwalk to break. It definitely looks fragile. You see waves churning below. Something cracks beneath your feet. A 0.75 litre Tallulah vodka with its cap missing. There's hardly anything left inside. It's mid-market spirits with a slight touch of menthol. The man meant to enjoy himself, have a good time. Tear all around us. <coughs> the entire boardwalk. There's some dried blood, Rabowski spearmint chewing gum. Green leaves on the cover. The man's mouth is half agape from the terror of the fall. The blackness of death. Stench. You think you see white chewing gum too? Confirmed. Nearly the whole pack is there. Solidified on his lower rear teeth. He ate the whole pack, right? It's to cover the smell of alcohol before going home. The worst thing is, I've seen it before. Almost the same scenario. Even the chewing gum. It's always the same. The entire boardwalk creaks in the wind as you take a step back. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central Jamrock Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejean, expires July 53. Billy is a unisex name. Could be the deceased or his family member. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio Thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers too. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005-02-55212. Or visit us at Moreau Street, 78, Jamrock. Business hours, 900 to 1800. We should first decide what to do with the body before taking any other actions. Let's take another look at the body and talk things through. A man lies on the board. Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? At least this man knew how to party. Imagine the same scene without the bottle. Now that would be just sad. And he was married. But let's try to not run ahead. For now, all we know is that he's an unidentified middle-aged man found dead on the Martinez boardwalk. Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. Oh, yes. Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident, and relate it to the murder case. Agreed. If this somehow converges later, why not? But keep it simple for now. What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the box. Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure. 
although there's still a question of identifying the body. From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. All right, we've already examined the library card. Let's call the Jamrock Library from my kinema, see if we can learn anything about this Billy Mejean. And while we're there, we should also call the station, let them know that we are taking the case. It's not what I was expecting to find out here. A second dead body. having encyclopedia knowledge. So yeah, that bumps me up to seven. The metal payphone under. You hear the tone. The machine is inoperable. Calling. Still calling. This feels wrong. Should you be doing this? End of tone. Someone picks up. That's not what I thought I was doing. I thought I was calling the, uh, the library. a small stuffed animal. Occasionally, she twirls it around. Oh, yeah. Oh, I had gloves. Very big ones. Heavy, too. Where did you get these gloves? Found them when Lemmy and I were playing hide-and-seek. In an empty house. Where no one lives. I think someone hid them there. She doesn't want you to think she stole them. I hid them. The twins were going to take them. They're stupid. We are going to need those gloves. It's for important police business. Oh. They're in my sandcastle. Behind our house. Under the sand. You can break the castle. It's not very good. My mom's outside. And I don't really know about my dad. It's a grouse! You might be able to get on Gart's good side if you replace the broken skewer you almost certainly broke. Sure. 
I mean, you already took it. I don't like it anyway. It looks angry. It's Lammy. He's my friend. Sort of. Like... Lamby is a stuffed lamb that, admittedly, has seen better days. Lammy usually doesn't like strangers. But you're also fuzzy, like Lammy. Bye! <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so she said the sand castle. Weather has not been kind to Lily's little sand castle. The once mighty towers are quickly eroding away. You can see something shining back to you from what must have been a vast underground catacomb network. The little castle? The reigning lord must have come upon some really tough times to let it sleep in such decrepitude. The walls and floors give way to the giant's greed, collapse and present you with a pair of ceramic gauntlets. Congratulations. That's the gauntlets down then. We're doing good on the armor collection front. As you fold your fingers into a fist, you realize you could knock anyone out with one punch. The white ceramic gloves wrap around your digits comfortably. Your movements cause tiny little clicks, like dice rolling somewhere far away, as the plates reorient to your motions. The hardened vitreous enamel, at once sleek and voluptuous, adds a glow to your cheeks and a spring to your step. Just imagine what a full suit of this stuff could do for you. You really do feel more confident. Invulnerability does that. Even partial invulnerability. Two, are you sure you're correct there? There was a helmet too. Three pieces more like. You were ambitious. The scruffy-haired little boy kick. He watches his brother kick the stone with his tongue lolling out of his mouth. The stone kicking one becomes frantic all of a sudden, as if that's something to be scared of. The obvious fact that you just stated. He looks just like me. The boy doesn't answer. His brother throws another rock. Both of their hair is covered in some kind of dirt. The rock kicker was just being shy, but now he's enthusiastic again. You're bad with kids. Don't worry, everyone is. How about we do some police work now? We're Something that makes me better perception. Factory balanced, baker light and stainless steel. Anything I can help you with?
The name is Lillian. People call me Netpicker. I think I have time for questions. What are the other ones? Ask her about the cool sword. Helps to break the ice. Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of a story. <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners from time to time. Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed. And one of them, I ended up marrying. Gone. To the waves. The sea took him. It was a long time ago. He didn't respect the sea. Went out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day, the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. She really likes those muscles, though. It's in the way she pronounces sinewy. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bedsick with melancholy. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and went on. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. This is neither a touchy nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another, better, drunk. Ask her. Both of you could need some action. Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now I'm tarring a little skiff. I sell the fish to people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants. Authentic insular Indian cuisine. Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. Keep it professional, man. Don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. Wood, pieces of glass. Every once in a while we see dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other odd sea creatures. A mine washed ashore once. Bottled, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. All right, major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. Hmm. Well, you're barking under the wrong tree then, officer. I have no interest in floaters. Seen enough of them in my life already. Very unattractive bunch. Sure is. The sun, I call her. Coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. Hi. Sunny days. You got a problem with that? No, ma'am. We have no quarrel with sunny days. Good. It would have been bad news had it turned out it wasn't a sunny day. Bad news for the skiff. Bad news for the nets. Bad news for the kids. There's a moment's silence. She looks at the slushy snow melt on the yellow belly of the boat. In time, when the sea turns and the wind settles, she will be ready. Let's see. Who are you looking for? Uh, I don't think I know what these are. Care to elaborate? <laughs> I 
Aha, like snowmen. Two odd guys have been wandering around here, nose in sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? Well, how can I assist you then, officer? here. It's a volition check, right? Yeah, it's a volition check. Let's level up volition one more time. And I'm going to head back, I think, to uh, town. I'll talk to Gart. And then we'll probably call it a night. We've been going for almost... We've been going for an hour and fifty, so... I feel like I've barely scratched the surface over here, so. But it's uh, it's only midday. I can pay for my room too. Maybe I'll get a discount for replacing his bird. The theme on that pinball machine is a standard royalist theme. You clinging to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back and cast out all the profiteers and homosexuals. Basically, imagine a yellow plastic crown with a liquor brand emblazoned on it. The contemporary period stands still. The fated carousel of progress that doomed the royalists is itself winding down. Our time is decelerating into what no one knows. Interesting. Can I help you? What is this thing? What, the interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm going to go with thank you. People just don't know how to accept gifts. Especially taxidermy. He likes it. This was mostly about the fucking cardio. Massive cardio here. You <laughs> live till 90, or you get a heart attack from running. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. It's not actually about that, but he liked it. Another thing. Great. I love those. Oh, okay. Well, I did hear you make noise back there, so good for you. He's really, really holding himself back here. <laughs> okay, what is back there? Ha! I knew it. I've always wondered where those machines by the door came from. And they told me there was some kind of pinball thing here too. I knew it. Were there any back there? In working order, I mean. I was just wondering, 
if you found pinball machines there. He was wondering about something business related, about how much money he could make of one. Capitalist plot. The pinball we have in the corner now is broken. I want to diversify the entertainment options. It wouldn't hurt to get a little life in here, other than the hellish karaoke machine. That one's always causing trouble. Yeah, those numbers he's adding up must be making good sense to him right now. Sounds like he cares about the place. He's not going to be overjoyed to hear that it's part of the doomed commercial area. He should still know. You have to be forewarned about these things. What wall? I'll have it fixed at once. Thank you for letting me know. I assure you, the Whirling does not abide spying on its guests. The color has drained from his face. What a shame to fix such a good peephole. Thank you. I'll patch it up personally. Was there something else about the establishment? I hope not. Yes. Got the 20 real. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. Okay, well... Fairly fruitful, I feel like. I guess the elevator would probably be the faster way of getting up here. I have anything for volition. I've, I've uh, picked up so many items lately. Conceptualization. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions, pertaining to a murder investigation. Okay, let's give this, let's give this a couple goes. 17%. I was just thinking. Just like the last time. We'll try this a couple times and then we'll get off here if it doesn't work. 17% is pretty low, so I'm not going to spend all day. I got four minutes. We'll do we'll do this for four minutes. I was just thinking. Just like. Oh. oh. I'm not above a little save scumming, but it's bad for the stream. Like midway. Since this is the last thing we're gonna do anyway, I'll give it a couple tries. I was just thinking. Just like the she last was just time. thinking. Yeah, one second, I'll be done in here. I was just thinking. Soft. Oh, hey! Brown eyes that happened you quicker than I thought. Directly into the space behind your eye sockets. You see the smoke rise from between her painted red lips. She's beautiful. 
I have bad news for you. You know these guys? Who? Me? Yes, you. <laughs> He's talking about you, you boring stiff. You too. Me? What did I do? I'm merely a master thespian. These guys are compromised. She's got them singing along to her tune. The little bleeps and bloops you trust for info. You can't trust them anymore. I'm sorry I didn't catch it sooner. It takes conscious effort on your part. There's no way of knowing. At the moment, I'm afraid it's best to assume. All of them. Bullshit, man. I ain't compromised. Especially that guy. <laughs> that guy's the most compromised one in here. No fucking way, man. I just want a drag of that sweet menthol Ziggy. Really? Quick, tell me what's under her jumpsuit. Glory, truth, softness, protect her. She wants you. Interesting. I take it back. He's got it pretty bad. But this next guy's on another level entirely. She likes you. The crown head is a boring condom. He's jealous. This is human nature. How it always does, through subtlety. There's nothing you can do about it. You are how you are, and she is how she is. Things will go as they do. No. It's better to know you're being played than to be played without true. knowing it, is it not? I think it's safe to assume, yes. Mr. Thespian here hasn't been speaking up. If he were... I suspect they would be peons to her truthfulness. Like this. She is a lady, most fair and just. In his defense, to reduce him to such inadequacy, she probably had to employ half-truths more often than outright lies. That is correct. And omissions too. A little. They're all still of limited use, interpreting things to the best of their ability. Maybe they add flair or something. I wouldn't know. I don't add flair. But when it comes to assessments of character and factual accuracy, they are not to be trusted. Not with her. Don't be melodramatic. You can trust them. Just not with her. You can't draw a sound conclusion. The one who usually does says, She may want to control the information rollout. Not to become a suspect. She may have a past she's escaping. Unrelated to this case. You doubt it's something truly insidious. See? It's oddly moderate. Probably compromised. Don't worry. It's only been four or five seconds. You've got this. For a second, her face disappears from your cornea. Only a silvery negative remains. Still smiling. A tired smile. It sounds like the boys would have preferred my saying it did happen. I didn't want to get caught up in this. She is not at all worried the tape will contradict her statement. Hmm. What does that recording say? We are in the process of listening to it, but haven't yet. She nods, exhaling a dense cloud of cigarette smoke. That was very... That was very interesting. So she has potentially been lying to me this entire time. <laughs> hmm. You clearly see footprints. Jackpot. These and la yeah, nothing. Interesting. No one would have had the key.
The afternoon sun shimmers off the white on blue police livery of the motor carriage. Do something important? Something murder related? There's always... This is a Caprice Kanema. The Caprice Motor Corps follow-up with its air-cooled, rear-mounted 12-cylinder compression ignition engine driving the rear wheels through a four... Even at a standstill, the unibody Caprice Kanema. Someone has waxed it recently. Mm-hmm. You want to take a closer look? Yes. An extraordinary machine. It's nice and all, but why so modest? Put some zing into it. Flare it up. It's a bit girly right now. Fit it with some proper off-road components. Anything else? 130. I reckon that's a 7 liter V. Man, that's got to be a major advancement over the KR18GU engine on the old Caprice 40. 7.2. Supercharged. Saying these words brings him immense joy. <laughs> Okay. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Hold on, officer. I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to their librarian. Connecting the call in two, one. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? He sounds worried, yet ready to assist. This is how people get when the police call. Billy, Billy Majon, you said. Give me a moment, I'll have to check our database. Yes, hello, are you still there? I found Billy Majon's home address. Is that all right? No phone number, unfortunately. They're too poor to have a phone line. Here we go, sir. Rue de saint Gislaine, 33B, apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Capeside Apartments, it says. That's all. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? It says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Marie? Marie? Do you remember a reader named Billy Majon? They returned a Tibalt book the other day. Yes, it, it was my colleague Marie. Uh, she said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Lowe's Radio City 87. But we don't have it yet. Good. You have a name now. Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. And then goes for a little drink later, on the lookout. Marie! She said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he'd had a drink or two the last time she saw him. Uh, one second. Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. Anything else you need from me? One moment. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No field autopsy necessary. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? Any information on the library card? Good, you have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case or should I assign it to someone else? I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man.
We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? 57th, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. Hmm. Apartment 20. Well, I said I was going to get off here eight minutes ago, but let's finish. Let's wrap up this last lead. It's right here by where we're at. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. The box seems happy. <laughs> Just an ordinary war. No. Conceptual conceptualization. Just an ordinary war. No. Because oh, wow. you see it. Finally, this wall is sublime. Look, all the other walls on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this. Oh, wall father. Huh? He sounds tired of it all. You already have the heavy fuel oil to use as paint. It's red. And Cindy the Skull has a paintbrush. This is on. Mm hmm. Sure. If you must. <laughs> I feel more comfortable being a little weird around Kim because he's expressed that. While I am kind of uh, banana sometimes, he respects my way of, of investigating. I'm just eccentric. Not even that eccentric. 20. It wasn't here, right? No. Room 20. came through here. Oh, I bet it's the... I bet it's out on the balcony. Yep. A weathered brown door. The no Something smells good. Soup along your. The lieutenant motions to you to go ahead and knock. Save it first. A weathered brown. Something smells. The lieutenant motions to you to go ahead and knock. You're right. Let's do this true. You hear light footsteps passing by the door. We have our first preliminary identification. In all likelihood, the deceased is the husband of Billy Mejean. We need to confirm this, as well as deliver the death notification to Billy herself. Now, delivering a death notification is never an easy task. There's a reason why it's often called the most stressful part of our job. This is why it's usually done in pairs. You got this. I'll be monitoring reactions, ready to act if necessary. Dad, just don't say that you know how they feel. You don't. Good advice. That is good advice. The lieutenant motions towards the door. A 
and someone turns down the radio. He gives you a short, encouraging nod. Tidying up, nervously, there's fear in her voice. I gotta say, one thing, the thing that has kept me going and kept me thinking about this game even when I'm not playing it is just the right, the writing on this game is just chef's kiss. Like at every turn. The cigarettes. Stand. Oh, you. I, I don't know think you. I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? She did need something. Tea? Lemonade? We're out of coffee. The lieutenant has taken off his foggy glasses and is busy cleaning them in his handkerchief for now. You're on your own here. He must feel vulnerable without his glasses. Is this why he's letting you take the lead? Is this about Victor, my husband? Is he in some kind of trouble again? I can come pick him up in the station if that's what. No, this is something much worse. Is he in the hospital? How bad is it? How about some small talk before you break the news? I have some stuff for empathy. Thank goodness. Make sure I'm Hurting myself here. She looks up, too anxious to say anything. You've done this before. Just keep your focus. What did you say? Oh. Oh. But he was just... But he was just here. Alive. We understand this comes as a huge shock. I want you to know that me and my partner are here for you if you have any questions. Take your time, ma'am. What happened to him? Was he drunk? I see. And you just found him there, lying in the cold. How long had he been there? If you say two days, maybe, it will be etched in her mind forever.
This is tough. She blinks, eyes welling up with tears as her hand starts searching for something from the pockets of her dress. The handkerchief. A small, terrified smile quivers on her face as she takes the handkerchief and wipes away the tears. She looks disoriented. Is there anyone we could call for you? A friend, a family member, someone who could be here for you? No, no. I just need to tell my girls. God, should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? No. A day. Good. That's probably the right thing. Thank you. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? We've taken him to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number in case you want to contact him earlier. A very good call. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still... Thank you. Thank you for telling me. I'll call if... We should step outside and talk. Professionally done. You did well. I'll call the station when we're finished with the day and let them know the name of the deceased. They'll manage. They have to. It's not your place to live their lives. That's it. We should get back to our case now that our duty here is done. Let's go. All right. Well, with that grim note, let's see. I just switched these up today. Haha. <laughs> I appreciate you uh, hanging out and uh, watching some Disco Elysium with me. You could have been anywhere tonight. You chose to be here if you're here. And um, if you happen to be watching this in um, video on demand. Uh, don't hesitate to hit that uh, follow button. And we will be back again tomorrow, most likely, unless uh, work or something gets in the way. But just either check my Twitter account or you can just check my Twitter feed that is in the channel. Uh, I think it's in the channel description. You don't want to like go all the way to Twitter. It'll it'll say if I'm if I if I'm not streaming I will I will put a note on there. Um, but I don't think the rest of the week should be a problem. Uh, but yeah, we'll be playing Disco Elysium uh, tomorrow, and let's see, today's Wednesday, so tomorrow, and uh, Friday is my night off, but we might, since we missed the stream yesterday, I might go ahead and stream it tomorrow too, we'll see, or uh, Friday, I mean, um, but anyway, you guys have a nice night, and uh, come on back now, you hear? <laughs> Bye.